Good morning. Let me say a small prayer and then we will go into the word of God. Father, we want to thank you for your grace and mercy over our lives. Thank you for gathering us, Lord, on this day to hear from you. We pray even as we meditate on your word, speak to our hearts, strengthen us, Lord, in our faith, help us to know you more and to love you more. In Jesus' name we ask this, Father. Amen. In the Bible, Jesus performed many miracles. While he was on this earth, he, he performed so many miracles. In fact, Apostle John wrote it like this in the last chapter of the John the Gospel. He wrote it like this. If he wanted to record all the details, all the miracles that he performed, that Jesus performed while he was on this earth, there wouldn't be enough book on earth to record all those details. So many miracles Jesus did that you and I are unaware of those details. But whatever it is recorded, it is for our learning. It is for us to experience similar blessings in our lives. Amen. So one such miracle, all the four gospel writers wrote. In fact, this is the only miracle all the four gospel writers wrote about it. The five loaves and two fish. With that, Jesus fed 5,000 men. Apart from that, he also fed women and children. Personally, I have been blessed by this story a number of times. Whenever I would meditate on this story, God has always helped me to experience his goodness through this story. I have drawn comfort and strength from this story. And whenever I would meditate on this story, I have always attained certain additional insight which, which helped me to trust in God more. One such insight, I want to share it with you uh, this morning so that uh, it will uh, help us to come closer to God. The feeding of uh, 5,000 men, women and children was not only about Jesus' uh, care or supernatural uh, you know, manifestation of uh, the, the bread multiplying. It's not only about that. But apart from that, when Jesus fed the people, when people ate to the stomach full, when they left their, their, their place, what, what uh, amazed me was Jesus' concern about the leftovers. I'm sure under the instruction of Jesus, uh, under the instruction of Jesus, the disciples would have gathered all the leftovers. And when they gathered all the leftovers, the broken down pieces, it was 12 basket full of uh, leftovers. Jesus did not want the leftovers to go waste. Jesus did not want the leftovers to go waste. How much more he wants our life not to go waste. How much more he wants our lives not to go waste. So just like Jesus gathered the bread and the fish in order not to go waste, what he's doing, he wants us to gather ourselves in him so that you and I can find purpose in life and our life will not go as a waste. Amen. Otherwise, apart from Christ, we can live and we can live a life which is full of uh, uh, condemnation, guilt and our life will go as a waste. So in Christ, we are a new creation. In Christ, we have a purpose. So he's gathering us to himself so that our life will not go waste. So with this thought in mind, I want to read a scripture. James chapter 4 verse 8. James 4 8 says, Come near to God. Come near to God and he will come near to us. Wow, what an assuring promise that we can find through this scripture. As we come near to God, you and I can experience more of God's presence in our life. <clears throat> this is like a promise to us. So when we come near to God, he will come near to us. Amen. So when we, when we come near to God, what's happening? We experience his presence. We experience his love and his love transforms our life only in god's love our hearts can be healed all the brokenness bitterness all this uh, you know hatred everything which is which is which is like a which is like a poison in our heart which is killing us all these things can be removed only in god's presence and only when we experience his love amen so that is what can happen and uh, to us when we draw ourselves to him and that is the place our life will not go as a waste. Amen. Uh, recently, I have seen some videos. In that videos, I have seen how animal lovers 
they rescue animals and bring to a new shelter and how they uh, how they restore the animal to the original design one such incident i want to share which 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 blessed my heart which i want to share i believe it will bless your heart too so there was a particular dog which was abused by the old master it was such it was such a level to such a level uh, the dog would not trust anyone if 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 a new master would want to touch the dog the dog would shake out of fear it would shiver out of fear and go away uh, before it would receive a touch from the uh, new master so the dog was completely abused by this by the old uh, master and this dog dog was rescued by the animal lover and uh, they brought to their house so they they it was a new atmosphere so the dog could not trust this new master you know it felt threatened it felt uh, you know it, the, the new master will abuse uh, abuse the dog you know it felt like that <clears throat> but over the period of time uh, through, through the patience you know the loving care of uh, from the from the animal lover uh, what happened the dog began to realize this this uh, caretaker is good to me you know i can trust him i can i can i can eat from the do- the man's hand so they they the dog began to eat from the man's hand they began to trust <clears throat> the man and slowly the dog was restored to become a fully dog you heard it you heard it right the dog was restored to become a a fully dog that means the dog was now cheerful the dog was running around playful and this dog could express the love back to the new master imagine you have a pet dog and the dog cannot love us what what good the dog can be of course there are many things but usually they want to have a dog to experience the unconditional love the dog showers upon uh, upon us right so the dog this dog became fully dog and begin to exp- express his love for the new master that is what happens to us when we experience love our broken down life the bitterness everything is been cleaned and healed by god we become fully human to express our love for god and to reflect his love for one another to express our love for god and to reflect his love for one another that is when we will be fully human we are a new creation right in christ we are a new creation that means what we can do things what we were not be able to do in our old life without christ what we were doing those things in christ we can do the opposite we can be a fully human we can we can love we can we can care for one another we can serve one another which was a difficult task without christ so in christ we experience the new life so god is gathering us so that your life and my life will not go away so our responsibility is you know uh, to grow in christ not to give up when hard time comes when difficult time comes which we all go through we should not give up you know we all have a set of challenges which we will find in in our life but in the midst of all these challenges we have to remind ourselves this our god is a good god he will use all our experiences he will use the good and the bad experience and turn it around and make it a uh, and, and make it a uh, he, he make it as a good uh, outcome for our lives so that when we look back we would tell god you were good to me you were good to me amen and uh, <clears throat> and also when people would hear our stories they would uh, get a uh, comfort and strength through our stories even if you would die like a martyr like apostle apostles who died uh, like a martyrs i'm sure in christ our death will speak faith our death will speak victory that is what happens to us if you are in christ and if you are gathered in him our life will not go as a waste amen none of the apostles death uh, gone as a waste the life even speaks volume of uh, faith to us amen so with this thought of god not wanting our life to go as a waste he wants our life to have a purpose with this thought i want to go to the main passage of of this uh, message which is from second uh, kings chapter 
second kings chapter 2 verse 1 onwards so in this chapter we can see the story of elijah and elisha elijah gets to know from god his time has come up he will be going up in heaven through a whirlwind and uh, and he told elisha see i am going up so you stay in this place called gilgal so the, the story begins from the place called gilgal i'll come back to this place called gilgal it's a very important place for us to learn uh, uh, learn from this uh, learn about this place but what did, what elisha said to uh, to to this new master uh, to elijah he said elisha said some, something like this as surely as the lord lives and as you live i will not leave you so as long as the lord is living god is living and as long as you my master is living i will not leave you i will follow you so that is what elisha said and he could not elisha could not stop elisha following him so they followed from gilgal to a place called bethel a group of prophet came and told elisha do you know that your master will be taken up into heaven why are you following him he said yeah i know but shut up don't speak anything to me right now and at bethel elisha told elisha elisha god has called me to another place called jericho and i'm going there you stay here but elisha said as long as the lord lives as long the lord you my master lives i will follow you so he followed from bethel to jericho and even same thing happened a group of prophets came and told elisha your master is going to take an up but why are you following so so there is all, uh, already uh, uh, the message from god has been passed down to others saying that elisha will be taken up there are prophets uh, got to know about this message elisha also knew this will happen but elisha followed elisha till the last he followed elisha elisha till the last he wanted to serve him as much as he could while he was on this earth so he he followed from gilgal to bethel from bethel to jericho and from jericho to jordan and finally when they passed on and they crossed over from jordan and the jordan river was parted by uh, elijah also apart from uh, apart from joshua so they crossed over and then uh, elijah asked what do you want from me elijah asked something you know i want the double portion spirit of you on me the double portion of your spirit on me amen and elijah said it is a hard asking i cannot do this but if you see me going up into heaven you can have what you have asked for so that is what uh, uh, elijah told elisha so as he was speaking suddenly a, a chariot which is full of fire came and picked up elijah and went up into heaven and elisha could see that going up elisha could see that elisha was taken up into heaven and he called father 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 and finally he saw him no more his clock elish elijah's clock fell down on the floor and he took up the clock and the mantle of double portion anointing came upon uh, elisha now why i'm sharing all these things there is a meaning behind it a lot of truths we can learn number 1 elisha gathered himself with elijah elisha gathered himself with elijah there are a group of prophets probably they also could have done the same thing which elisha did but they did not do but only elijah had the conviction in his heart that i will serve my master i will do whatever i can do and i don't want to give up uh, i don't want to give up in serving my master he he followed till the last and only him only elisha received the double portion anointing you know that uh, that came from uh, elijah probably if even if it was somebody else would have come he would have other two two people would have come uh, elijah would have asked what else you want to ask they would he probably they would have received a blessing from elijah but they all chose to be st- because of the knowledge because of the knowledge they had okay this is what it is so they stuck to the knowledge and beyond the knowledge they did not pursue in following they did not experience a blessings a supernatural blessings in their life now so elisha followed elijah wholeheartedly and received a double portion anointing now uh, a double portion anointing means what usually talks about the first born receives a double portion anointing in a family a first born receives double portion anointing in a family and the first born eventually becomes the 
patriarch of the family so our first born is jesus jesus who is the first born receives the double portions of god and he governs our lives amen and and jesus you know he says he he's offering himself to us he says you know feed on me eat my flesh drink my you know, drink my blood and he is offering himself to us so that we can experience the sonship and daughters you know the sonship from god that we are the sons and daughters of god today so that we have the uh, the blessings of god in our life so that we can do what god has called us to do amen so that is the blessings of uh, the double portions that what elisha was asking he has received which today you and i you and i have uh, through christ in us amen so maybe for elisha it was a hard asking but for us it was easy because we believed in jesus we believed in jesus and we received it so now coming back to the story of uh, uh, elisha's travel from gilgal to jordan now gilgal is a very important place as, as i mentioned in the past in the beginning it was the place uh, where joshua asked from each tribe to bring a stone and to keep it as a memorial of what god did to them when they crossed jordan river in the beginning years before they crossed jordan river to enter the promised land and they came to the place called gilgal and they kept the stone as a memory of what god did to them today we have a bible all the stories are recorded in those days they didn't have a bible but they would uh, do such 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 kind of thing as a memory so that people living around this area keep repeating the story this was happened in the past and they would remember the story so years later when elisha was in gilgal and people lived in gilgal they all were uh, were aware about the what god has done in the past what god has done in the past the god has separated the waters and through that separation of waters we they walk through the dry ground and enter the promised land they, so they have the history they have a memory they have a story but because elisha followed elijah his story became very real when elisha parted the red sea he saw with his eyes when elijah parted the uh, the jordan river not the red sea he saw elisha saw with saw with his eyes he only heard in the past but now he is seeing through his eyes and later on he, because the anointing came upon him he did it through his own life so we have lot of stories in the bible lot of miracles in the bible all for us to learn and all for us to experience the god's goodness over our lives so if we follow christ closely jesus says you know if you believe in me you will do much more greater things than i did amen if you believe in me you will do much more greater things than i did so if you follow jesus the way elisha did if elisha is if elisha would be us and elisha would be christ just like elisha followed elisha if you would if you if you would follow jesus christ the way elisha did to elisha i'm sure some of the stories that we read in the bible just like elisha heard about gilgal will become reality in our life we'll see it and god's grace if if god allows it we will we will we will be able to uh, uh, you know operate those things through our lives also if god's grace is upon us you know if it is the will of god i'm sure we will operate those things even through our life so the condition was just like elisha followed elisha we have to follow our our christ not to give up not to give up now now this story also has lot of other uh, four, three or four places mentioned which has uh, other deeper meanings to this story which i will quickly narrate it gilgal was not only about the place of uh, uh, the the memory of uh, the, the jordan river parted away but also at gilgal uh god told joshua to circumcise all men who who crossed over into the promised land during moses time because of the unbelief you know they they expressed uh, displayed during the time the people died in wilderness 
okay including moses who, he, he would he could he could not enter the promised land there are so many people died in the wilderness so this is the new generation of people okay and they have not got circumcised so god is asking asking them to get circumcised in at the place called gilgal and he tells them in john chapter uh, sorry in joshua chapter 5 uh, 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 <clears throat> verse 9 uh, he is saying when they circumcised okay when they got circumcised he is saying i am taking the reproach of egypt from you i am taking the reproach of egypt from you so so it is like a separation the moment they got circumcised god is saying i am separating you from your past so today you and i have been circumcised in our hearts so god in christ has separated us from our past our past have been forgiven we have been forgiven fully we are a new creation you know in us god uh, re- resides in us so it, it's like just like elisha had gilgal experience you and i also have a gilgal gilgal, uh, gilgal experience we have been separated from the past amen so from that place elisha just like he went to bethel bethel is the place where uh the presence of god is now during the time of jacob you know he had an experience of a, a dream and in that dream god spoke to him saying that you know i am going to bless the nations through you through your generations and i am going to bring you back to this place i'm doing i'm going to give you this place and and jacob got it from the dream and then he believed this is the place god is and then he he anointed a pillar of uh, a, a stone uh, he anointed the stone and called that place as a bethel so bethel means a house of god bethel means presence of god just like elisha moved from gilgal to bethel we also from 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 gilgal from this place where god separated from the world and we should come to the place of god's presence seek his presence bible says those who are planted in the house of god those who are planted in his presence they will flourish even in old age they will bear fruits amen so wholeheartedly as we follow christ he will lead us into his presence and he will help us to get planted in the house of god so that you and i will bear fruit even in the old days from bethel you know he elisha went to jericho jericho is the place where they have faced a huge uh, wall huge obstruction to go to go further into the, into the into the promised land so what did god do god came and helped uh, uh, joshua during that time so so how did they do god told joshua just obey me don't make any war noise don't make any noise just shut your mouth and keep circling the number of times as per i prescribed you that number of times i told you six times run around six times walk around on the seventh day do the same thing six times on the last time you will see you will blow the trumpet you will make a you will shout and the wall will collapse so they obeyed god by faith they walked by faith so jericho is jericho is like walking by experience so when we follow christ not every time we can uh, Uh, find our way sometimes we can find uh, uh, you know difficulties at the time instead of grumbling and murmuring let us trust god and walk by faith let us not confess the wrong words but walk by faith so as we do that we can see the victory of god that god has given in our life that's one thing and from jericho quickly I'll jordan jordan is a, is a place where the river parted away it's, it is similar thing to the red sea parted away which was a symbolic representation of baptism it is like identifying ourselves to the death and to the resurrection of christ amen so we align ourselves to christ we find ourselves in christ so today if you re- when we read ephesians we can see in christ in christ in christ so we are in christ and he is in us so when we are in christ we have the hope of glory amen so so uh uh I just want to bring a closure to this uh, message by saying this one point you know Elijah told Elisha if you see me going up you can have it what what you are asking for if we see Jesus is alive in our life if we see Jesus is risen from the dead if we see Jesus is no more 
uh, under the tomb, but he is the Lord of, he is the Lord, who, who is the Lord God, he is the Lord Almighty. If you see him like that, I'm sure you and I can have the boldness to, to face the world. If you see Jesus as a dead God, probably you and I will not have the courage to face the world. But because God is alive, he raised from the dead, you and I have the boldness to know our God is good, our God is the Lord, and he is the he has all the authority and he has given us those authority to us. Amen. So, in closing, God does not want our lives to go waste. What we have to do, we have to gather ourselves to him. When we gather ourselves to him, we experience his love and in his love, we can see whatever we read in the Bible, whatever uh, we have, uh, you know, when we we have we have we have only heard as a history uh, if you pursue him if you don't give up if you don't give up but we if we grow in him i believe with all my heart the history will become a reality in our life amen god bless you